Hi everybody, um, I'm Brian. Uh, welcome back to our Chess Skills for Beginners and Fundamentals class. Um, this class is open to everybody. Um, it's not just the students who go to our college. This is part 11. We're looking at how to avoid blunders. Now, I gave this presentation to the students a couple of weeks ago, um, um, maybe about three weeks ago now I think about it. We uh, just finished up our uh, winter or spring semester. And so um, we had exams, so we couldn't really meet for that week. But the week before, I wanted to make sure we ended the semester with um, some good notes on how to avoid blunders. This is a short presentation today, which is fine. Um, I wanted to make sure that we weren't doing too much at the end of the semester because obviously chess is a student club. It's not, uh, or chess club is a student club. It's not an official class that you study for, um, that you get credit for. So I wanted to make sure the students had plenty of time to um, get their um, assignments done and papers done before um, the end of the term. So um, before we start this, though, I do want to talk a little bit about our Chess Fundamentals class. Um, as you know, I talk about, the, I give updates about the club every so often. We have, I want to say, maybe 75 members now, 76 members in our club. That's pretty good. Our overall campus population is we have about 12,000 students. Um, we have a lot of clubs on campus, so to have that many students in our club, I said I say is, is quite um, quite a feat. Uh, we are one of the most popular clubs on campus, who would have thought? Um, but I'm very proud of that, and I'm proud of the students uh, who participate. It's been fun seeing everybody grow throughout the year. Um, we only get them for two years, as we're a community college, but um, but it's great to see um, them grow and, um, and get better at chess. So what we're looking at on this screen basically is our uh, chess fundamentals plan and checklist for our cohort. This is very similar to the chess dojo that um, Jesse Cry and David Pruis and Kostya and I've, I can never remember his last name have. Um, they have a, a, a dojo they call it where there are hundreds of people who um, who pay to be in the cohort. They play. They uh, they keep track of their games. They grow, um, they have specific um, assignments, books to read, specific things to do, videos to watch, etc. And as they go up in ratings, then they go into another tier um, to play against uh, more people in their cohort. So this is similar to that. Um, I, the, the sheet that you're seeing on the screen, I, um, there's some ideas from the Chess Dojo that I incorporated in here, but um, this is sort of a... Um, an amalgamation, I think, of a lot of different uh, sources and some of my own creativity too. But um, if you're interested in joining the dojo, I highly recommend it. I'm not a member of the dojo, but someday I hope I am. Um, it does cost money, but um, it's pretty reasonably priced at someday. Um, hopefully I'll join their team as well. And um, I encourage you to join too if you can. Uh, the people on the screen, as you can see, we've been monitoring our progress through the winter. We call it a winter semester, but a lot of colleges call this spring semester. Right now we're in May of 2023. Our classes ended, um, what, two weeks ago? We had exams a couple of weeks ago. So um, we have not met in about three weeks. Um, and I forgot all about this video, but, um, but I thought I better put it up before I completely forget about it. You can kind of see everybody's progress here. Uh, we put down our ratings from time to time. For my Blitz, um, I'm at 735. My Rapid is 1295. That's down. Usually I'm in a 13 or 1400s. Um, my Dailies are at 1202. I time out a lot, so um, I struggle with that. My highest puzzle rating is 1552, and I'm an old gold member on chess.com. That's not the new gold where you get all the free videos and all of that, but I do get, as part of my old gold membership, because I've been a member since 2008, unlimited game review, which I love. So um, I believe the new gold does not have unlimited game review. It's just one per day. So that's the reason why I'm not converting over to the new gold. At some point, I hope to... Um, pay a little extra money. I think it's, I don't know, 65, 75, something like that um, for the next um, the next premium membership up from gold. That way I can have unlimited puzzle rush. Um, you do get an unlimited puzzle rush with the new gold, but as I said before, I, I value for me the, um, the unlimited um, the unlimited game review. And there's other places that I go to for puzzle rush, like chesscup.org they have a, they have a, over half a million puzzles on their uh, website so that's where i go um, but like i said uh, at some point um, i would like to buy uh, a better membership at chess.com so also um in, in this um 
in this uh, checklist or plan, you can kind of see some of the things um, that the students are doing. I challenge them to um, do better than me. I'm, I'm not the greatest chess player. I'm just, like I said, a beginner um, or maybe a very low intermediate. But, um, but you know, we're all growing. Uh, that My plan for uh, my goals are that um, I wanted to hit 1,200 by the end of this uh, fall semester, which I basically did. I was I was a little shy of that, but now I'm in uh, 1200s, and I want to get to 1300 by the end of this year. And by year, I mean uh, December of 2023, and then hopefully to uh, 1500 by uh, 2025. That seems a little ambitious, but um, I'm going to work towards doing that. Um, as you know, I'm a librarian. I'm the director of the library at our college, but um, my my primary focus, I have a master's degree in library science, and so I'm a researcher, which means um, I research. I look to find uh, study materials and try to learn from them and to pass that knowledge on to uh, to our students. So, um, so this is just a way that we track our puzzle rush. A little further down, um, this is where we um, analyze our games. So some of the serious games that I play, I will, uh, like I said, I analyze almost um, all of the serious games that I play, but then what I do is I write notes and then I make them public and then I and then I share them with our team or our cohort. If you're not a member of this cohort, please consider joining. Um, you do not have to be a student or a staff member at our college. This is open to everyone. And as I said, you know, in my limited skills, I am learning too, and I can use any help from anybody to um, to help our students. And then our next section here basically is looking at um, some of the videos that I've found that I thought were thought were very helpful and I try to pass those on to the students. And then this section here is our chess fundamentals class. As you can see, we have a number of videos on here that um, that I presented over the sev that past several months. And um, a lot of our students have been watching those um, or they they come to the class. Um, we do meet in the library on Thursdays at uh, 2.30, and so a lot of these presentations I do live, but then I record them at home. So uh, people who um, don't want to come in person, but they want to participate, they can watch them at home at their own leisure. Or if you went to a class in person, you can watch it again online. So, all right, it does go further on to the right with some of the books that we're reading, some of the videos that we're watching, that sort of thing, but you kind of get the gist of what we're doing. So if you want to join, send me an email and I'll be happy to sign you up. It's free. It's open to anybody. And like I said, it's not just for our students. It's, you know, we will learn from anyone who wants to be a part of our team. All right. So let's go to the actual presentation. Um, I, like I said, I gave this a, a few weeks ago, so I apologize if it's a little rusty, but this is part 11. So we're looking at how to avoid blunders. As you know, that's one thing that I've been trying to do in my journey through chess. Um, I'm at the level now where um, I noticed with our students, there's a lot of blunders going on. So my number one goal is getting my blunders at zero. And when I say getting my blunders at zero is when I'm looking at the um, analysis through chess.com, you know, how they tell you, you know, how many blunders you made, how many misses, how many mistakes, um, how many book moves, how many good moves, how many great moves, and how many brilliancies. I look to see that I have zero, or I try my best to get zero blunders every single game. It doesn't always happen, but um, but that's my goal. All right, so let's get started. So the best way for us to improve for as beginners and immediate, intermediates too is to just generally stop blundering. Uh, for most of us uh, beginning amateurs, one of the main reasons we lose a chess game is because at one point during the game or at a later point, maybe in the middle game, we make a blunder. So, for example, we hang an undefended piece or we're a victim to an attack like a double attack, such as a fork, skewer, discovered, a check, a discovered attack or a check, those types of things. So um, what we need to do is think about how not to do that. Don't hang pieces. Um, look for checks, captures, and uh, attacks or threats of your opponent, that sort of thing. And do you have any of those things against you? So we'll talk a little bit about that um, over the course of this presentation. So the first resource I want to share with you um, I, as you know, I'm a big fan of international master Nelson Lopez. He is the owner of Chess Vibes, or he's, that's the name of his channel. So I do watch a lot of his instructional videos. He's fantastic. I am friends with him on um, chess.com, but I've never actually played a game. He doesn't, I don't think, plays games um, with maybe with people, people at my level. But, um, oh, it says he's a national master. I thought he was international master. I could be wrong. Anyway, um, he's... Uh, 
he seems like a, 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 like he knows his stuff um, compared to some of the other people that I watch. As you know, I'm a very big advocate of these Fritz trainers from um, Chess Base. Um, I do watch a lot of them. I own several, or many, I should say. And it's a fabulous resource. But what I'm going to go through today basically is um, some free stuff on chess.com. So look at Nelson Lopez's uh, Four Steps to Blunder Less. And I put the link on the screen. You can type it into your search um, box and or just type the title in. He's saying that you need to stop blundering in order to do that. You need to look at your king, your opponent's king, your pieces, and your opponent's pieces. So when doing that, he says, before you make a move, do exactly that. Look at your king. Is it under a potential attack or is it about to be checkmated? If so, move it. Look at your pieces. Are they under potential attack? Are any of them hanging? That sort of thing. If they are, prevent that from happening. Um, so once you look at those things for yourself, then do that for your opponent. Does your opponent's king, is it, um, can you, can you, uh, threaten the king? Uh, can you checkmate the king? Can you maybe checkmate them in your next move? Those types of things. Other things to think about, and he kind of talks about this in his presentation. Again, try not to hang your pieces. Make sure all of your pieces are defended. This point is actually a common threat, a common, um, uh, point that a lot of uh, these blunder check videos talk about look for potential threats like forks pin skewers discovered attacks discovered checks trapping forcing moves for your opponent but before you do something like that make sure that you yourself don't have any forks pins skewers or discovered attacks uh discovered checks trapping or what should you say potential forks pins and skewers if it looks like your opponent's going to be able to do that well then maybe you want to defend uh for yourself to make sure they can't put a pin on your king and your queen. Uh, actually, or I should say a fork in your king and your queen, something like that. Um, something that we do in class, and I've said this to the students quite a bit, play seriously. For us, we only spend an hour and a half, maybe two hours every week together, which is not a lot of time. So don't waste your time with openings like the bong cloud. I said that once to a student and he was playing Hunter. He's um, Hunter is our student who is um, trying to or he wants to participate in the US Open this year he's trying to um, he wants to get ranked as a national master he, he's right now he's about 2000 in his in, uh, for USCF rating um, so um, so one of our students was playing him and he played the bond cloud and I said why did you do that and the student said because I wanted to see what it was like well you're playing hunter he's our best student um, he's actually the best person in the in our group. Why would you waste time doing something like that with him when you could have played a legitimate opening and learned from him? So make every move count is what I'm trying to say. Take advantage of the time that you have together and that the time that you play online and don't 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 play moves that are just not serious and aren't going to help you learn. If you want to do that, okay, you can do it in a quick game, but if you're really trying to study don't do those sorts of things when you are um, trying to get better and trying to take time to study and learn from chess. Here's another uh, video that I found uh, by uh, Grandmaster Igor Smirnov. He has um, a lot of really good videos out there. I've watched many of them. I believe this is a two-part series on how to eliminate blunders. Um, I've got the, um, the link. You can type that into your search bar and watch the full 20-minute video. It's good. Um, a lot of his content is really good. What he says is to warm up before the game um, with tactics. That's one way to stop making blunders. It's kind of like when you want to um, play like soccer, for example. You just don't go out on the field and play your heart out um, without warming up because if you don't warm up, you could hurt your muscles. You could damage your joints. You could hurt your heart you really need to warm up before you play with sports same thing if you're going to work out jesse cry is always talking about this on the chess dojo you know if you're going to go work on uh your bench press you don't just do the most um the heaviest weight to start with you want to warm up and make sure you don't damage your muscles before you do that so make sure you warm up um like with tactics before you start a serious game visualize your openings and winning games without looking at the board. And I think what he's talking about is before you play the game, you know, I've been studying the London. Some people say it's a lazy opening. I like the, the London because you could play it against anything. It's a great one for a great opening for beginners. Um, I spent a lot of time working on um, opening principles like 
you know, leading with a central pawn, developing your pieces toward the middle, not moving the same piece twice, don't move your queen out too early, make sure you castle, you know, in the first 10 moves or so. So I've spent years and years looking at um, those principles and I've gotten up as high as in chess.com, I don't know, maybe 1600, 1700 with those opening principles. Then I took a time off and my rating went down. Um, so now, um, yes, I did work on those opening principles for a long time, but now I'm looking at openings. Am I at the level for openings? Probably not, but um, I want to anyway, just so I can have fun with a couple of openings. The Italian game is another one I'm looking at. Do I play the Bond Cloud? Never have I played the Bond Cloud. Anyway, so uh, Igor Smirnoff is saying, like I said, visualize your openings and um, and your winning games without looking at the board so that you can try to duplicate those things as you play the game. He also said, uh, create a database and go through your winning games and memorize them. So whether you're creating a database on chess.com or Lee Chess, or if you have, this is not the, the, the program, but um, I have chess base that I store a lot of my games in and I can run analytical software on them. Um, so you can create your own database. There's also another program called um, SCID, S-C-I-D is how you uh, spell it. It's similar to, um, to Chessbase. I did use it for years, many years ago. Um, it's a good database if you don't want to spend any money, but if you have 100 bucks or 150 bucks, I would say buy uh, Chessbase, or at least to buy um, a membership like on chess.com so you can create um, libraries of your saved games and your analysis. All right, Igor Smirnov also says, keep track of your opponent's plans. Figure out what they are trying to do. Ask yourself, what is the idea behind what your opponent's last move is doing and what are you going to do next? Uh, focus on the game. He says, don't be distracted, don't be nervous. Um, a lot of people like even uh, the test chess dojo with Kostya, he's always saying, you know, if you really wanna play a serious game, don't have music playing in the background. Um, don't have several windows open. Don't watch videos. Focus on the game. So this is a, a common um, advice from many masters of chess. Don't be distracted and try not to be nervous. Just play the game the best you can. If you are too focused on your own plans, you may miss what your opponent is doing. So think of your opponent's ideas before you think about your own ideas. Um, that's important. You know, you want to make sure that um, if uh, if you look for checks, captures, and attacks, look at what your opponent is doing first before you look at what you're doing because if the next move they're going to make is a checkmate, it doesn't matter what your plan is. You've lost the game. So um, think about what your opponent is doing before you think about what you are doing. Look at the whole board. If you do a blunder check, you can remove 80% of your blunders. Igor says that. I don't know if that's scientifically proven. Um, as you know, I'm a researcher, so I don't know where he gets that number from. I would like to see a, um, a source for that, but maybe that's from his own experience with his students and his own games. But um, I do believe that if you do your own blunder check, you probably will win more of your games. We're going to go through how to do that. We're actually going to do. We're actually going to analyze a game with a blunder check um, at the end of this video. He also says defenders blunder more than those who initiate attack. So be an attacking player. It's easier to attack than defend. Um, be sure to take the initiative, make your opponent be the defender, and make them make the blunders. Um, I've heard Anna Kramling say, if you can do your best to hold out to at our level, if you can do your best to hold out and not make any blunders, chances are your opponent will make a blunder and then you can, um, you can take advantage of that. When you're short on time, simplify the position, exchange pieces, and make simple moves. I hear um, this guy, uh, Andrew Martin, says that all the time. Um, I believe Levy Roseman, he's Gotham Chess, has said that many times. So these are pretty common, um, common principles. So let's let's uh, let's let's take what they have to say and try to incorporate that in our games. Igor later says, uh, stop hanging pieces. Those are the undefended pieces. So make sure everything's defended. Stay calm, keep your emotions in check or under control, and concentrate. After your opponent makes a move, ask yourself, what was the what was the point of my opponent's move? And see if you need to combat something or if they open themselves up to something like a like a pin, a fork, or a skewer. Look for checks, captures, and attacks. I hear that all the time. Um, what else does he say? Make sure you have plenty of time. If you make more blunders, 
uh, because you don't have enough time to think, then play longer games. I'm always saying that to the students. You know, they love these three-minute games, but um, they have a ton of blunders. Um, I play several three-minute games too. I get it. It's fun. Um, I am at the point where a lot of my three-minute games have zero blunders, but I really have to concentrate um, when I'm playing these games because I can't really do a lot of deep thinking with these uh, shorter games. So the, the solution to that is play longer games. Play a 10-minute game. Um, which I think is better anyway. Play Rapid instead of Blitz. All right, I talked a little bit about uh, women's um, federal master, um, Anna Kramling. Um, she, I really enjoy her video. She has her parents on a lot. Uh, both of her parents are grandmasters. Um, I believe she's from Sweden. Don't quote me on that, but um, that's, I think that's where she's from. And um, her mom is like, the top rated woman master in the entire country. So it is fun to watch um, Anna take uh, master classes from her mom. She's, um, I do highly recommend her. She's great. Um, she does play a lot of chess and, um, you, you know, when we're, when we're trying to find videos to share with the students, I'm always thinking, is this a video where someone is just commenting on what they're playing or is there an actual lesson in, um, in this video? So, Think about that as you're watching some of these videos. But I put the the secret to stop blundering in chess by Anna Kramling, um, and let's what, let's see what she has to say. So always place your pieces on squares that are, that are defended or uh, defended the moment after. This is one of the first things she says in the video. Um, I agree. Don't make, make sure you don't have hanging pieces. Always develop toward the center. She says development is key. At the beginner level, your opponent will blunder. So do your best to be patient and not blunder. I kind of mentioned that before. Um, and I think that's where I got um, that advice from that I said, you know, at our level, our opponent will blunder. Try not to blunder so that you can take advantage of their blunder first. Anna also says, look to see how many times a piece is attacked. Make sure your pieces are not attacked more than the number of pieces you have defending it. Um, I have gone through that in a lot of my games, um, and sometimes we just can't. We just don't have enough pieces to defend them, and so you have to figure out well, what's what's the um, what's the best way I can have the minimal amount of damage in this case. It's crucial crucial to have your king involved in the end game. Oh, I believe that. She also says continue to make sure all your pieces and pawns are protected in the end game, which is difficult to do, because in the end game there's not as many uh, pieces on the board. So it's difficult to protect all of your pieces, but it's very important because you don't want to lose your uh, pieces uh, in the end game. Before you make a move, look at the whole board and see if you are hanging any pieces. This is directly uh, from her, I believe. Look at the piece you are about to move, and if the new position puts your pieces in jeopardy, find a better move. Get plenty of rest and don't play when you are tired. Um, actually, I'm going to go back to that. Um, don't play when you're tired. A lot of times, um, just to, to get a few games in, I might play at you know 11 o'clock at night when I'm really tired, um, but I want to get some games in. I find that when I do that, I'm really not playing at the level I should be playing, and so I lose a lot of games. And you might want to think about that. Do, I, do you really want your rating to go down or kind of lose your, um, not your pride, but um, do you really want to lose some games if you're tired and you're not thinking? Think moves through before you make them. So before you make a move, I, I kind of talked about this in a, a little bit ago. Before you make a move, what is your opponent's best move? So um, as you make your move, what is going to be your opponent's response to that move? I just recently um, made that a part of every move I make. What is my opponent's best move? And before I hit submit on chess.com, I'll make sure that um, that's the best position for me. The, I'm, I'm um, looking at my pieces to make sure that I'm not hanging anything, um, that sort of thing. Because, you know, the move you, the move you make, the piece you move could have been defending another piece. So make sure you think about, if I make this move, what is my opponent going to do? And if you're not going to lose a piece, you're not going to put yourself in check or checkmate, then or put yourself in a worse position, then, then you might want to think about uh, making that move. So think through each move. Um, we're almost at the end of the presentation. So I thought I had this game. Um, I was ahead of material. I'm focused on making a queen. It's my move. So what do I do? Um, I did not do a blunder check. I was, um, as you can see, I'm at 1295 at this uh, game. 
I'm playing a 1455 level person. I was really happy because this person is, you know, 150 points above me. I got this in the bag. Um, so I'm focused on making a queen, but I didn't do a blunder check. Again, what was the blunder check? When I make this move to make a queen, what is my re opponent's response going to be? I did not do that. And this is what happened. So I promoted my pawn to a queen without doing the blunder check. And what's my opponent's response? Well, there is no response because he's drawn. There's no safe square for the king to go to. So I lost. I, I drew the game. I could have had a win um, had I done that blunder check. So, um, yeah, this is kind of a hard lesson learned. What I should have done, maybe, is move my um, knight to a different square so that the uh, white king had a place to go in that next move. So that's the, that's the reason why you want to make sure that you do a blunder check. So don't take anything for granted. Think through every single move and make sure you don't blunder or make a mistake. And always think about when I make this move, what is my opponent's response going to be? All right. Thanks for listening. I do want to share a quick game with you that I played this week. Um, let's go through it real quick. All right. So um, let's go back to the beginning. Um, this is a um, a three-minute game, so this is a blitz game um, that hopefully we're going to run through some blunder checks with this game. So I lead with um, the queen's pawn, d4. Uh, black responds with d5. I move my bishop out to f4. Um, they respond with nc6. So you can see that I'm already starting to um, do the London opening. Um, I move my knight to f3, black moves their bishop out to f5. Um, this is a good move um, with my pawn. Usually I, I don't do it in this order. Usually I push the e-pawn up one square to e3 first to um, make my bishop get into the game. But for some reason um, I wanted to doubly uh, or triple um, the defender or double the defender to um, that, uh, that pawn on d4. Um, also, Stockfish says that um, the best move would have been to attack um, the uh, Black's Pawn on d5. Usually I do do that if I have the, the opening order a little bit different. So Black responds with e6. Finally, I move my e3 or my pawn to e3, which I should have done the move before. Black responds with bishop to d6. Usually I rock my bishop back uh, in this kind of situation, and the reason is if I were to take the bishop here, a lot of times um, black just um, develops the queen out, which um, pulls me back with, like I said, I, or, or it makes me have a waste of tempo or time and helps black to develop quicker with their, um, with their queen. So that's why I rocked my bishop back. Black takes my bishop. I take their bishop with um, h takes g3. What I like about this move is that it opens up that file, the h file, for my rook now. Um, next move is uh, black moves h5. I move my bishop to d3. Um, as you can see, Stockfish is saying the best move is to pin the knight by taking bishop to b5. What I like about this is it does sort of the same thing as the previous position with the other bishop. Um, I'm attacking um, their bishop, and a lot of times what they'll do is they will attack me first, and I will then bring out my uh, queen and develop my queen to d3. Sort of the same principle. Um, black is wasting a tempi or a time, and then I'm getting to develop my, uh, my queen faster. All right, so black brings out his queen to f6. I take, bishop takes f5. Um, black takes my bishop, so we've just traded bishops. Um, these are all pretty normal moves at this point. Again, we're getting um, defended, or we're getting um, our positions um, developed. I move my knight to h4, which I'm preparing to uh, attack more on this king side over here, but I thought maybe I would threaten the black's queen. So, um, Black moves the queen to e4, although Stockfish is saying moving the queen back to f6 is even better. I move my knight out. I usually move that anyway, which is nice because I am attacking uh, the queen. If the queen were to take this pawn here, 
um, on g2 i am actually defending the g2 pawn with my knight and if black is thinking about taking my knight well i've already got that covered two different ways so um so that's um that's kind of like what, what i was thinking the black moves queen to d3 although stockfish is saying that the best move is queen to h7 um, so that it has control of this really long diagonal I move my knight. I'm again trying to establish more control over on the king side because I'm anticipating that my opponent is going to um, castle on the king side, but you never know. Um, so black is forcing a trade of queens with queen takes d1 check. I take the queen with rook takes uh, d1. Black castles queen side, which I was not um, expecting, but makes sense because he had an open uh, way to do so. I'm now going to try to pawn storm up the board. Um, usually what the, one of the principles is, is um, if I were to um, castle kingside, we would have opposing kings. And then usually the person who can attack first um, has more control over the game. So as I said, I'm going to try to pawn storm my way with my pawns onto the king size, king side's uh, pawns so that I can open the, the king's protectors up and hopefully attack the king. So that's what I'm thinking at that point. So um, black probably realizes this, and so they're blocking my pawn with uh, b5. I move my rook now over to a1 because I'm, again, trying to pawn storm, but also to attack on the king side to open this up, which they already kind of did by moving this pawn up, which I'm saying might not have been a great move, but because it's now made this square, this b7 square, very weak. And as you can see, there's weak squares all around um, uh, around the king. So let's keep going. Um, black plays a6. I play a4, uh, which is an excellent move. According to Stockfish, I am now attacking the, B, the pawn on b5. Now, here is a mistake. Um, I, I would imagine what black is thinking by moving this piece, they are threatening, or this pawn, they are now threatening my um, knight and they're probably thinking hey there's no safe square for my knight to go to as you can see that square is protected that square is protected i already have a piece on that square and there's a pawn on that square so they're probably thinking oh i've just trapped their knight but they didn't it's a mistake by black because he's attacking the knight as i said with the with uh the pawn g g would be g takes h4 but he doesn't notice that I have a piece already protecting. See, he's attacking this. He doesn't realize I already have a piece protecting um, that piece. But, but more importantly, I can just take his pawn outright. Had he done a blunder check, he would have seen that my pawn, excuse me, he would have seen that my knight can take his pawn for free with knight takes g5. So what did I do in the game? I did what Stockfish is saying is a great move. I take his pawn with knight takes g5. So I take the free pawn with my knight. Um, as I said, Stockfish says it's a good move. Um, so he does another mistake by um, knight to f6. Why is that a, a mistake, you might be asking? I wasn't because I saw what my next move was already going to be. I wanted for my next move, I wanted to um, eventually put a, a fork on to black had he done a blunder check though he would have seen that um, he has a hanging pawn on f7 but more importantly um, my knight can fork both of his uh, rooks as you can see it would be that move and therefore i would be forking both of his uh, rooks so that's exactly what i did i took his free pawn and now i um, forked um, both of those rooks. So black um, pushes a pawn to threaten the d4 square, get a little more control over the center. I stay with my plan, which is knight takes h8 or takes the rook on h8. You can kind of see for time, um, black is already down by a minute. I have an extra minute to kind of think here. As again, again, it was only a three-minute game. The next move is black takes my, uh, my knight on h8. Um, I take the pawn uh, with d takes e5. Um, black uh, responds, with, which is the best move, with knight to e4. 
I take um, with A takes B5. Black responds with um, A takes uh, B5. I put my uh, rook. I'm hoping that he will blunder again by thinking he can threaten my rook. And then I would swing all the way over to the opposite side of the board and grab his other rook. But he does not do that. What he does instead is he blocks with his knight, which is actually a pretty good move. It's the best move. So now I'm going to threaten more pieces. I'm trying to simplify the board because I'm up in material. As you can see, um, my evaluation is white, uh, white is way ahead in this game in terms of evaluation. So now I am attacking the, the rook on d8 with my knight. All right, what does black do? He threatens me with um, rook to g8. This is an inaccuracy. Do you know why? Can you see another another fork? So uh, he's attacking my knight on g6, but um, I can also attack uh, with another fork, which is knight to e7 check. Um, so I, again, have forked these two pieces. Well, um, he does a pretty good move here, um, the best move, which is king to b7, which now is threatening my rook on a8. But since I'm ahead in pieces, um, what I do anyway, I stick to my plan. Um, so I take knight takes um, g8. Um, obviously, he responds with queen king takes a8. So we just basically swapped um, basically swapped uh, rooks, which is fine because I'm ahead of material. So simplifying the board is what I want to do in this position. So now what I did is I am adding more support onto his side of the board with rook takes h5, plus I want to take another piece. Eventually, um, he does a, a pretty good move here with knight, um, knight takes c3. Um, he could have also moved his pawn up to uh, c5. What I did is I'm now trying to promote this pawn um, and provide support up on this side of the board so that I can uh, promote the pawn to a queen. Um, the next move is black moves knight to e4. Stockfish says that black made an excellent move here, but by doing a blunder check um, with captures, um, checks, captures, and um, attacks, he would have seen that he's got a hanging, p a hanging pawn here on d5. So rook takes d5. Um, it is the best move according to Stockfish. He is trying to add more um, pieces up on this side of the board so that I can't promote. Um, although Stockfish is saying that king to b7 is the best move, not knight to d6. So I'm going to stay true to my plan by promoting the pawn. Now Stockfish is saying this is um, a mistake or inaccuracy. I should have just swapped um, my rook for his... Um, knight but i chose not to do it that way i'm going to um, do it another way so um he brings up his knight to uh, d7 um, i'm finally going to do what stockfish says what is the right move which was i'm going to swap pieces because there's no way that black can um can stop my promoting pawn because this square here uh, the square here on e6 is defended by my knight. So I'm going to promote that piece. That's exactly what um, he does. Is He's trying not to prevent my piece from, um, from promoting. This is an accuracy because he just hung his knight. And I will get another piece. And I do that by rescuing my rook so that um, black doesn't take my rook. So rook takes f f6. He moves his king to b7. I promote um, with a queen, and you can see that the time is up. Um, but um, this would have been a very quick end game anyway because um, I'm way ahead of material. So again, there were some things that I think this opponent could have done better if they had um, done a blunder check. What I find interesting about this game is, first of all, it's saying that I played like a 1400 level player, that my opponent played like a 1000 level player, 
my openings are pretty good because I'm pretty by the book in terms of a London. Um, but I had a pretty good middle game. So, um, yeah, this was uh, 91.6 accuracy for my uh, middle game. If you go up here and look at the overall game review, my entire game was 92.8, which is pretty good. I had zero blunders, zero misses. Again, this was a, a three-minute game. I had one great move, no brilliancies, but that's not a surprise. I'm not brilliant. so. But I did pretty good. The, my only weakness was I had one inaccuracy, according to Stockfish. So that's a pretty good game. Um, is there anything else I want to say about this game? Mm, I don't know. Um... I, what I would say is, again, do a blunder check with every move. Um, you know, what is your opponent's move? What are you trying to do? If, if, like I said, if Black had done a blunder check, they were in two different um, forks that they could have gotten out of if they had done a blunder check before they hit that submit button. Of course, playing a three-minute game, you're not going to do any deep level thinking, so there's going to be mistakes all over the place. But anyway, stuff to think about. All right, well, I'm gonna leave it here. Um, thank you for watching the video. Class, thank you so much for uh, being so involved. I've really enjoyed this uh, semester with you. It sounds like there's a lot of students who wanna continue through the summer, so we will figure that out. And when we will meet, I uh, hear that, that a lot of the students wanna do um, some, um, uh, some tournaments, maybe some, um, not daily tournaments, but maybe like a, like a 10 minute per side tournament. Um, or maybe five minute per side. We'll take a look. But anyway, stay in, stay um, in touch. Um, if, like I said, if you like the video, um, please give it a like. It does help our channel. Um, if you want to join, please do join the club. Um, we have a great team of students. And um, thanks for watching. As if, if you have ideas on how we can make the channel better, or if, uh, as, like I've said, I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty transparent that I'm a beginner myself or low intermediate. I can always use help uh, from those who know more about chess, and I would love to um, to learn more from you. So thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.